Hello everyone, welcome to a bit of a special episode of Living History. This is not one of our regular episodes, this is just a bit of a bonus because there's a few things going on that I wanted to share with you. Um, as always, thank you so much for the people who've been listening to the program and responding, sending us emails, sending me tweets, messages on Facebook. I love getting your feedback and it does shape what we're doing on the program. Several of the episodes we've done recently have been inspired by communications we've had with people, requests for information about a specific topic. So please keep sending them through. And also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please review us and give us a rating. If you're listening on iTunes or one of the Android apps, please uh, give us a rating uh, and a review. It always helps other people to find the podcast and we'd be most grateful. I've had a really great week. I hope you have too because I've been doing some very special things in history and I wanted to share them with you. And probably the best of those that I did was I had the incredible privilege of interviewing Charlie Duke. And Charlie was the 10th man to walk on the moon. He was the uh, lunar module pilot of Apollo 16 in 1972. Uh, and he was involved in the entire Apollo space program. As you know, the 50th anniversary is coming up of the original moon landing on uh, in 1969. And Charlie Duke was involved in every facet of the Apollo program. He was there during the terrible fire on Apollo 1 that cost the lives of three astronauts. He was the man on the headset communicating from mission control to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin when they walked on the moon on Apollo 11. He was intimately involved in the the drama of Apollo 13 when they thought they were going to lose that spaceship in outer space. He was there... Um, trying to work out the solutions to bring Apollo 13 back to Earth. And then, of course, he flew to the moon and walked on the moon on Apollo 16. So that was an incredible privilege, really one of the best interviews I've ever done. It was extraordinary. I don't often get nervous when I do an interview, but I was doing that one because um, I was just so honoured to meet him and to hear his story. So look out for that. We're going to do a special series of podcasts in mid-July, just before the 50th anniversary of the moon landings. So look out for those ones. Also this week, I went and toured the... Anzac Memorial in Hyde Park, the new museum that's there. It opened last year for the centenary of the First World War. What an extraordinary place. If you're in Sydney, I strongly recommend that you get down and check out the new museum at the Hyde Park Memorial. Unlike other museums, it tells the stories in a very individual way. Uh, it's a collection of personal stories about people from New South Wales. Really quite amazing. So definitely get down there if you're in Sydney. If you're living in Sydney or coming to Sydney, it should be very high on your list of places you want to visit. The main thing I wanted to tell you about that I'm excited about this week was we've launched our World War II cruise to Papua New Guinea. This is amazing and I know there are many, many people out there who will really be excited about this. This is a project I've wanted to do for many years now and finally I've brought it all together thanks to P&O, um, have done a great job. We're going to be doing the cruise in conjunction with P&O and basically we've taken a large group allocation on Pacific Dawn, one of P&O's nice four-star ships and we're going to go up to Papua New Guinea. And I'll be on the cruise and joining me are five other absolutely brilliant World War II historians. So we've got people like Carl James, who's the head of history at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. Uh, we've got Gary Mackay, who is a Vietnam veteran who knows a huge amount about the Pacific War. He's going to be there to talk to us about the experiences of combat and jungle warfare. We've got Dave Howell. Dave was at the Shrine of Remembrance in Melbourne for many years, and he's done more than 50 crossings of the Kokoda Track. So he knows this ground better than just about anyone else. And probably the thing that most of us are looking forward to is we are honoured to also be joined by a, a lady by the name of Kiko Tamura. And Kiko is, as her name would suggest, Japanese originally, but she's lived in Australia for many years and works uh, as, a, as a, a teacher at the Australian National University. And she's done amazing work into the Japanese experience of the Second World War, why Japanese people were fighting, what was it like for the men on the ground, the whole notion of dying for the emperor and the Bushido code and all these things we think we know about the Japanese. And I think we do this chapter of history a slight injustice because we tend to downplay the significance of the Japanese involvement. The Japanese are always depicted in, in movies and books as just these two-dimensional characters charging out of the dark. And of course, there is no war without an enemy and the Japanese were fighting for very specific reasons themselves. They, they weren't mindless robots just charging into battle. They had very specific reasons for being there and very specific experiences that they went through during the Second World War. And we don't understand the full story of what was going on if we ignore the Japanese side of things. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what Kiko has to say about the Japanese experience during World War II. And there'll be a couple of other historians we'll be announcing in the coming weeks. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. What are the historians going to do on board? Well, 
in a couple of key ports, most notably Milne Bay and Rabaul, the historians are going to lead our group on exclusive shore excursions. So imagine walking the ground at Milne Bay accompanied by Carl James, who is one of Australia's leading experts on that battle. He's been there several times already and he's really looking forward to getting back. We're also going to be going to Rabaul, the great Japanese fortress that was so impregnable during the Second World War that it was bypassed by the Allies. They never even attempted to capture it. They simply cut it off and moved on to the next island. And of course, during the First World War, Rabaul was the scene of Australia's first action of the First World War. It wasn't Gallipoli. Listen to last week's podcast about the Battle of Bitterparka. This was the first Australian operation of the First World War and it took place in Rabaul. So we're going to walk the ground where this first and very important battle of the First World War occurred in Rabaul and also see an extraordinary range of Second World War sites in that destination. But as wonderful as those shore excursions will be, they make up only a small part of what we're doing during this cruise because we are also on board the ship. We are having, and you are absolutely going to love this, on three of the days we are sailing on the ship, on the days we're at sea, we are going to have a World War II conference exclusively for the people in this group who are joining us for this experience. So our six brilliant historians are going to do presentations about specific topics. They're going to do panel discussions. We're going to do workshops, interactive workshops, where you'll get a chance to to ask all your questions to the to the historians, question and answer sessions where you'll drive the content. So it's going to be really wonderful. It's not, it's not going to be a boring, dry academic conference. It's going to be really interactive. It's going to enable you to ask questions of these historians, have your questions answered, and learn about their experiences studying the Second World War and really paint a very broad picture of what that war was like for Australians. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. I, I can't wait. And of course, the experience doesn't end during the day because in the evenings, we'll be holding special dinners with the historians, cocktail parties. You will get a great chance to speak to all of these historians and get one-on-one time with them to hear their views on areas of the war that are specifically of interest to you. So especially if you had a family member who served or if you've been a lifelong student of the Second World War, this is going to be an absolutely remarkable experience for you. So Come along on the cruise. It's going to be great. It's in August 2020. So it departs Brisbane the 26th of August 2020. It sails round trip from Brisbane. It's an 11-day cruise on Pacific Dawn. Full details are now on our website at battlefields.com.au and I would absolutely love to see you on that voyage. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to get up there. I can't wait to hear what these incredible historians have to say about the Second World War as we walk the ground and sail through the waters that were so pivotal during that war. So it's going to be a wonderful experience. I hope to see you there. As I said, give us a call on 1300 880 340 to find out more information or visit the website at battlefields.com.au and look out for more great podcasts coming up in the days and weeks ahead because we've got some absolutely brilliant content. Thank you as always for being a loyal listener and I'll talk to you very soon.